All right guys, welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, we are going to be assembling this EJ25 short block. In the last video, we actually tore the engine down and got it ready to send out to the machine shop. And we just got the case halves back today. So check it out. What we ended up doing to the case halves, we got them bored and honed to fit these JE forged pistons. These JE pistons are going to be paired with these Manly h Tough series rods and then we will be using an OEM crank. With this build, we're actually doing something a little bit special. What I mean by that is these rods are actually two millimeters longer than um, the OEM rods. The reason why we do that is there's a lot of benefits to having a long rod engine, such as better rod to stroke ratio, less bearing wear, more piston dwell time, lots of benefits. You can pretty much Google all the benefits on the long rod engines. Um, there's a lot of debate on how much it actually matters, but um, theoretically it makes sense to us. So we're gonna give it a try, see how it goes. Because we are running rods that are actually two millimeters longer, we actually have to compensate for that. And the way we do that is by running these stroker pistons here. These pistons are actually meant for a stroker crank. And what they did was they decreased the compression height on the pistons by two millimeters. Because of that, we can actually use these pistons that are two millimeters shorter with these rods that are two millimeters longer. Before we actually put the engine together, there's a couple things that we have to do, such as measuring out the block, checking all the clearances, and filing down the rings. And then once we do that, we can actually put the whole short block together. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started on that, and then we'll put the short block together. Okay guys, so we just did the ring filing to do the ring gap and now the next thing we're going to do is check the bearing clearances. And in order to do that, what I'm going to do is put the bearings into the case halves and then I'm going to bolt it together and then measure the clearance in between the bearings. And um, hopefully they're all within spec so I don't have to do this too many times. So let's find out.
All right guys, so I got all the clearances measured out. Everything is within spec. So one thing I did have to do though was I ended up having to run thicker bearings on one side of this case half here in order to get the crank oil clearances in spec. And here's the numbers I got. And I'm pretty good with those numbers right there. And the rod bearings actually all checked out. I didn't have to mismatch any bearings here. The ring filing is all done. Piston the wall clearance is all good. So now we can move on to the fun part, which is throwing the engine together. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay guys, so I'm always getting a bunch of questions in the comments about what this tool is right here. And this here is a rod bolt stretch tool. So basically, in order to get optimal clamping force out of the rod bolts, it's better to measure the stretch rather than the torque spec. Yeah, you basically just put it on the rod bolt and then as it stretches out, this gauge will measure how much it stretches. And then at a certain point, you should get the optimal clamping force for the rods. So there it is, and there you have it. Guys, I almost messed up. I was actually supposed to put the RTV around the O-ring on the outside rather than the inside. So I got to fix that real quick. And then afterwards, I'm going to drop the crank in and then bolt together the case halves. Yep, let's get to it. Alright y'all, just like that, I got the case has together and it is looking good. Check it out. Got it bolted up, nice and greased up. The crank spins pretty freely. Now I just got to drop in the pistons and then we'll be good to go. So I got my pistons right here and they're all labeled. So this is going to be piston number three. I'm not sure if this is actually piston number three or not, but those are my piston number three rings. They're all filed and ready to go. Um, still got to do some things to the cylinder heads though. I do want to do a light pocket port and I'll show you guys how to do that in a second. But for now, let's drop in these pistons. Okay guys, for installing the piston, here's exactly what you want to do. So first things first is I'm going to clean or wipe down the cylinder walls with a rag and some brake clean. Spray the rag and we'll wipe this down. You can actually see how dirty it was. A little bit of dirt in there. What I like to do is get some oil and then just oil up the cylinder walls. Okay. And then on top of oil, I do like to put some of this red line assembly lube as well. Lube up the cylinder walls. <laughs> I 
<laughs> cool, cool, cool. All right, next. Um, this one is gonna be cylinder number one. So let's grab my cylinder number one piston. It says right, right here. And then the front with an arrow should be pointing towards the right. And then I have my rings already filed here. So let's go ahead and install these piston rings. Okay, so here we have the piston. And then what I like to do is lube up the piston um, wrist pin bores. I think I'm gonna use, let's use oil for this right now. I'll just oil it up. And then since we are going to be installing the piston wrist pin through this direction, we want to install the C-clip on the backside right here first. We'll go ahead and put that in. Bam, like so. So first thing I like to do is put on the expander and then I'll put on the bottom oiling ring. I'll just twist that on like that. And then I'll put the top on afterwards. And these rings here are non-directional, so it doesn't matter which way you put them on. And then bam. So for the ring end gaps, I have the bottom oiling ring end gap at about one o'clock. And then the second one at about 11 o'clock. And this is where JE wants you to have it at. The OEM Pistons uh, Subaru, they want you to put at four o'clock and about seven o'clock. But I'm just gonna follow JE's instructions on this one. Next, we'll go ahead and put on the, the two compression rings. This one's more of like a, an oil helper helper ring as well as a compression helper ring I guess and these are directional so you want to make sure that the N25 is facing upwards and for the ring end gaps I will put the bottom compression ring at three o'clock and then I will put the top compression ring at nine o'clock 180 degrees opposite so technically you don't want to spiral on these two compression rings here you want to use a piston ring expander but in the past, I've spiraled them on many times before without any issues, but for the sake of professionalism, we're gonna use the piston ring expander. Bam. The top ring for the other side. Boom, just like that. And then now we wanna oil up the piston and the ring packs. So I'll use just regular engine oil here. Get the ring packs, and then you wanna do the, uh, the skirt as well. And then I also like to use the assembly grease on the piston skirt as well. Doesn't hurt. And screw it, we'll put on the ring pack too. After that, we wanna use our trusty ARP piston installer. And then we'll drop the piston inside. Just like so. Double check, make sure that C-clip is there and seated. And then we can go and install it into the short block. So, just make sure the rod is sticking straight up. And then we'll put the piston into the bore. And then you simply just press down. Just like that, bam. Perfect. And then now you wanna press the piston down and line it up with the small end rod bore. So press the piston down. So it's lined up. Bam. That's pretty close. All right, cool. So now we just take the wrist pin and slide it in. A lot of times this does not go smoothly. So usually when it doesn't go smoothly and it gives us trouble, I like to get my trusty 22 and then move the crank a little bit and then it'll kind of help line it up. And this situation is not working too well. Ah. Bam. Done. And then the final step, we just put in the C-clip. And then just like that, we got the piston into the cylinder bore. Pretty easy. So now we just got to do that uh, three more times and then we'll be set. Let's go ahead and do the rest. Okay guys, so check it out. Ran into a little issue. So I took a chance with uh, building a long rod engine and here is the issue I'm dealing with now. If we look, the piston is actually coming above the deck ever so slightly by like four thou. And if I touch it with my fingers, I can actually feel it a little bit above the deck. 
So because of this, I might have to run a slightly thicker head gasket to compensate for it. If we look at the middle of the piston right here, it is below the deck quite a bit, which is nice. And if we measure the middle of the piston right here, we can see it's also below the deck, which is also nice. But at the very end of the piston, like if I rock it downwards, it's below the deck. And then if I rock it the other way, it comes above the deck ever so slightly. So yeah, this is actually our first time building one of these long rod motors and we are learning as we go. All right guys, that is it for the day. Stay tuned for the next episode while I work on my cylinder heads. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment if you got any questions. Later. Later.